That's Seema Gupta reporting there from Kinshasa. Can video games help people care more about protecting wildlife? Well, that's the idea behind production company Internet of Elephants. Their games use real data from conservationists, allowing users to act as scientific researchers, tracking apes and photographing elusive leopards. It comes at a time when scientists warn that we're living through a mass extinction driven by humans, with over two-thirds of the world's wildlife populations in decline. The founder of Internet of Elephants, Gautam Shah, joins us from Kenya to tell us more about his vision. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning. Now, before founding Internet of Elephants, you worked in IT for 20 years. Can you talk a bit about your own story and what led you to create this company? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, so you're right. I spent 20 years as an IT consultant. I worked for a huge global consulting company. Um, but I spent all my vacation time and my salary taking wildlife holidays and having these amazing encounters with animals. Um, but there, there, there just kind of came a point where it all felt very selfish. I was the only one benefiting from it. I called it wildlife gluttony. Um, and I knew, knew that I kind of that I needed to do more than just take cool holidays. So um, so fast forward a, a few years from there, and, and I eventually got the courage to quit what I call my perfectly good job and figure out how to use that IT background towards towards wildlife and nature. And can you tell us about some of your games? I know one of them, Wildiverse, has been described as being a little bit like Pokemon Go. Yeah, you know, most of our games, and I think you mentioned at the beginning, most of our games, you know, focus on, on, on scientific data and real data that's actually being gathered about these animals, but try, using that data to try and tell stories about the individual. So if you like Wildiverse, you will encounter four individual apes, an orangutan, a gibbon, a lowland gorilla, and a, and a chimpanzee. And these are real apes in the wild. These are, they, they have real stories. They have families. They have a life. They've been studied you know, by, by researchers for all their lives. And the games are really intended to, to bring those stories to people, to bring, but bring them in a way that, you know, that, that players can actually spend time with these animals over, over a longer period of time. It does make me think of experiences I've had watching live cameras from wild bird's nests or from inside local zoos. Uh, is part of the idea to kind of create a personal connection with an animal in the same way that we might create a personal connection with another person from far away? 100%. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. And I think that, that was kind of the insight when I, when I started the company and, and how technology got involved was I kept thinking, you know, technology is being used to connect people with people connect people with their cars, with their refrigerators, you know, what would change in the conservation world if we were that connected with, you know, with animals and especially individual animals that were, that were out there? Even if, it's, even if it's just five minutes a day, how does that change the, the place that wildlife has, you know, in our, in our consciousness? And you launched your company several years ago. Do you have a sense of what the impact has been since then? Well, it's, it's, it's a tough it's a tough one to measure, right? I mean, I think I'm always somebody that says behavior change and the way you change somebody's consciousness, like, you know, how do you measure that? How do you measure that in a short period of time? Um, but what we are noticing, what we are noticing is that people really enjoy spending time with wildlife content. They spend they spend time with animal content. We we did a we did a, a campaign with Adidas. Um, where you could use the Adidas running app to run against real animals in the wild and, and, and all the while, every day, get the story of the life of a snow leopard or a pangolin. Um, and in, you know, in the 10 days that these campaigns run, all these runners who really, you know, you would think maybe they don't have a relationship with wildlife, they're paying attention every day more than, you know, than any other campaign that Adidas is running. Um, so we're really, you know, we're really seeing that idea that, that connections with individual animals are something that, you know, either within a game or outside of a game, you know, are, are something that grabs people's attention and we're, we're trying to take advantage of that. And I believe you have a new project coming out this year called Ocean Vision AI. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about that one? Yeah, so Ocean Vision AI is, is sort of the umbrella name for a project that's being run by the Monterey Bay uh, uh, Aquarium Research Institute. And they, they, you know, they effectively, they have rovers, it's amazing, they have rovers that are just traveling through the ocean, um, unmanned, capturing images of every single thing that, you know, that they see, either on the ocean floor or, you know, transecting the ocean, you know, right through the middle. But that gathers millions and millions of images from tiny little microscopic worms, you know, to, you know, to, to giant squids. 
Um, and all that, you know, all that imagery needs to be, you know, essentially needs to be labeled. We need to understand everything that's under the, you know, that's under the ocean. And so the game that we're working on with them right now, it's called Fathomverse. Um, is a game that gives you, the player, the opportunity to see all this imagery, but also actually contribute to, you know, to how those images are being labeled and how people are understanding, you know, everything that's under the sea. So that is a game. It will get released sometime in January of 2024, but uh, there will be a small beta release of it in, in July that people can, uh, can, can get access to. So in that game, users would actually be the ones truly participating and analyzing data along with scientists. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the latest UN Biodiversity Conference in December, um, nations agreed to protect 30% of the planet by 2030. Do you feel that progress is being made on biodiversity, or is it still just a lot of talk? It's, <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't know if I'm qualified to answer. I mean, it's getting a lot more attention. I can say that. I, you know, is, is progress being made? I mean, if, if the first step in progress is getting attention, is if the, if the first step in progress is actually getting people to come together and talk about it and realize that there's something that needs to be done, then yeah, absolutely. I, th you know, I, think, that there's, I think that there's progress. I still think that most of the indicators, like you, had, you know, indicated, I think five years from now, if I'm honest, I think we'll be worse off than we are now. Um, but it's a, it's a process of first getting the attention, you know, then doing some of the stuff that we're doing is showing that, you know, this isn't just something that governments need to be talking about. This is something that people really, really value. Um, and we often say, you know, how can we get people to care about wildlife? I think people really do care about wildlife. I think, I think they really do. Nobody doesn't want it to exist. Um, but we need to give people sort of easier ways of expressing that value system. And when we do that, and when people see that, you know, I do, I do think that the, the, the tide will shift. And you did mention that the money you made working in IT really allowed you to travel and experience the natural world. I liked your phrase, a wildlife gluttony. Do, do you worry that access to nature is becoming increasingly a luxury? It's hard, you know, but, but you know, we don't, we don't have to think about wildlife only as, as orangutans in Borneo or as, you know, rhinos in, in, in Namibia or jaguars in Brazil. I mean, I grew up in Chicago and I still go back to my sister, you know, my, my sister works for the forest preserves there. The amount of wildlife that exists actually just within the forest preserves of Chicago or in the forest areas around a lot of urban you know, areas is, is pretty amazing. Like, you know, we can go and look for snowy owls or cranes or beavers or otters. And, you know, I get just as excited and I think people can get just as excited about the wildlife that's next door. So, yeah, of course, going on a safari halfway across the world is extreme, you know, is an extreme luxury option. Um, but there's many, many ways to get very excited about the wildlife and the animals that might be right outside your door. That's absolutely true. Uh, Gautam Shah, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye out for your games. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, a reminder, that was Gautam Shah, founder of conservation game production company, Internet of Elephants.